Hello YouTube, this is Rhino Dan. So Hello Moto asked me what I'm in up to. I couldn't tell him I wanted to. I got into RC cars. So I made the wing orange for him. The reason I got into RC cars is because it's cheaper to race than motorcycles. And motorcycles are cheaper to race than cars. But with today's economy and the way all the inflation is, I don't have the money to get back on the track. And that's the thing that I tried to tell my friend years ago when I raced. He told me to wait until I had the money. But I knew that money is a flow and you never know when you're going to have enough of it or not enough of it to race. And I had to make it. And I had the money then and I made it did it. And if I waited, I never would have raced because that's just the nature of money. It comes and goes and it flows. And that's it. So into that story. So here I am on this this is a game called Virtual RC. It's my way to train. I've been working on it diligently to get better. I wasn't always this good in the beginning, and this isn't even all that good, but at least I can put together laps. When I first started, my fastest lap was in the 50s. Now my fastest lap is in this 36 seconds. This video isn't about me RC racing, which it is part of it. This is also the, think of it like this car right here is spec class. Think of this as like a 300. And when I go to modify, think of that like a leader bike. And I'm going to show you the difference between the two. And you would be surprised which one I'm faster with. And we'll come to that conclusion at the end. But just because a bike is slower on paper doesn't mean it produces less, not as fast lap times. There's a lot of variables involved. And one of the variables is you, the rider how fast you are. I know everybody wants to go out and spend money on a leader bike and get like an R1 or some type of Ape Aprilia V4 super bike and take it to the track and rip and think they don't belong in C group, but you absolutely do belong in C group, especially on your first track day. Just because you have a $30,000 motorcycle doesn't mean you're gonna be putting out fast laps or you can be able to ride your bike properly to be on the track with others that are fast. There's time and time again, if you've been around my channel long enough, you'll see me out there riding with people that have leader bikes and 600s and lapping them and gapping them and doing all kinds of things that shouldn't happen. Of course they get me on the straightaway, which is very true, but by turn two or three, either I pass them or about to pass them. And by turn four, I'm always passing somebody, especially at Sears Point. And the reason being is, is this. The straightaways is one thing, and that is definitely true that an R1 is faster than an R3 in a straightaway. It's very true. But if you're slow in corners, an R3 will overtake you. And there's even a, a YouTube video right now where a guy in a Ninja 400 that beats uh, an H1, right? And you're like on the racetrack, you're like, how is this B? Well, the guy on the 400 was a race, was a pro rider, and the guy on the H2 was an H1, was H2, was not. And just because the guy took him on the straightaways by a few turns, the guy on the 400 overtook him. These are the facts that you have to deal with when you're a new rider and you're getting on the racetrack. It doesn't matter what kind of car you or bike you have, it matters how good you are as a rider. And that's probably one of the most overlooked aspects of when people go to the track. They think it's all about their equipment, their bikes, and how fast it goes in a straight line. Unfortunately, this isn't drag racing. This is racing. And if you're not fast in the corners, no matter how fast your bike is in a straight line, you will be lapped. That's just the sad truth of it. I have a friend of mine that makes motorcycle racing memes all the time making fun of guys who think just like that. They'll go out and spend a lot of money because they have deep pockets on motorcycles that are supposed to be really fast on the track are getting beat up by 300s. And that's not fact. I mean, that is a fact. That's not fiction. And I'm not going to redo that part. I'm trying to make this in one take as I'm driving on this track, doing the best I can. So here I am, I'm excited to be motor RC racing, 
instead of motorcycle racing again with the inflation in the economy I don't have it and let's go over some things why I don't have it instead of race tires for a 400 is gonna cost me about 500 bucks and then I'm gonna get a generator so that's another four to five hundred or a thousand depending on the make and model and then I'm gonna get tire warmers that's another five hundred dollars all of that just so I can go on the racetrack and you're like why do you need tire warmers why do you need race tires well first of all you need tire warmers because otherwise you're gonna blue your tires so if I go on the racetrack and my laps are fast enough and I don't keep them heated to a, the heating and cooling off of the tires cause blueing so that was very good so I did a 36 and a 38 I'm gonna get back to the blueing here in a second that was very consistent riding right there driving right there it's very is the best I've ever done normally I'm not that good so now I'm about to go into the electric modified and I'm going to show you how fast this buggy is compared to the one I was just driving which was spec class it even looks different and everything I still have the orange rear tail for Halomoto so let's go as you're going to see here in a second I know that's a YouTube hot word as you can see I'm gonna clear those jumps I couldn't do that with the other one I had to take them in piece by piece I'm gonna get on the gas gun it and I can jump all the way over from that jump to the other jump this car is insane with the power alright so I'm gonna go back to bluing so now I demonstrated how fast this vehicle is and we're gonna see the lap times comparing the the first the spec class is an R3 versus an R1 and we'll see which one does better Man, I already off the battery sucked. So bluing happens is when you get the tire temperature up to really hot race temperatures and it cools down. And when it cools down, those are heat cycles. And after so many heat cycles, you ruin your tire. So if you're gonna spend five hundred dollars on a set of tires, you better have tire warmers. Otherwise you're gonna damage your tires over time. And that's why it's a it's a combination package. I can't keep this car on the track. It's so fast and so difficult to drive. And that's the same thing with an R1 on the racetrack. It sounds weird on paper to have 200 horsepower, but can you control it? Right here, I'm gunning it and I can't make the corner and I go off the track. Same thing happens with the R1 to people all the time. They get themselves into trouble because they go too fast too quickly and their skill set isn't able to handle the speed. Doesn't mean they can't one day. But if you're new to track racing or you're new to racing, you definitely don't want to start off with a faster bike, work your way up to it. Because you got to work these skills where you can actually handle the speed and the power the bike's going to deliver. Otherwise, you're going to underperform and it's going to be very frustrating. And there's a thing too where you can slow down and go slower, but your lap times will be just as slow as if you were driving a slower bike. So all those things I mentioned earlier about how much it costs to to get back on the racetrack, I could have bought an I is enough money to buy an RC car, build an RC car, get a controller, get batteries, get a charger, tires, and race an entire season just for me buying a tires for a few races tire warmers and a generator not including all the other parts that goes into making a motorcycle race compliant yeah I just don't have the money and that's why I'm RC racing by the way this is harder than it looks to drive a car where in the this is like realistic when you're on the driver's stand you're seeing the car from this perspective you can make it easier by making it like a regular video game like Forza or Gran Turismo where you're behind the view or in the vehicle and though that camera angle will definitely make it a lot easier to drive but if you can't stay on the track and you keep wrecking no matter how much power you have you'll never win a race and you'll never be as fast as some guy that's going slower than you that's more consistent and hopefully this proves that because I just can't keep this on the track without crashing. And it's nice to have all this power because it allows me to make up for some mistakes, which it does, but I'm still not putting out the lap times that I should be putting out. 
just because it's so difficult to get the timing down. And that's the problem with starting off with a vehicle that's too fast. When I did buy my RC car vehicle, because I did buy one, and I'm going to be having a video of me building it later on, I could have bought one, like went right into modified class, but I decided to go in the spec class so I can learn speed and handle it. There's a skill set here that's different, totally unique to RC driving than it is to motorcycle racing. In motorcycle racing, you can always look down at your speedo to see, oh, this is a 60 mile per hour corner, I'm going 60 mile per hour, make my race lines and I'm fine. But on this, speed is subjective because there is no telemetry, there is no dash. I have to be able to look at the car in real time and estimate like, am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Like, trying to get into that flow state. And it's very difficult to get into a flow state for me on, on RCs than it was in motorcycle racing. Different skills. Some things are the same, like apexes are apexes. But you still have to manage your jumps here. And as we've seen, some of these jumps, I'm really over, over jumping it or under jumping it. There's a certain speed you really have to take the jumps to perform properly otherwise you're losing speed on the landing and you're trying to set yourself up for the next corner this is all part of racing and this is why I love racing so much is the challenge of getting things right of putting in consistent lap times and really challenging yourself to be good not just good one time being good all the time I guess that's a life moral story right there too of just trying to be a better person and be a good person all the time not just once in a while when someone's around you want to impress that's kind of like racing you just got to be your best all the time that's my insight for the day I suppose I didn't throw this I didn't go slower on purpose I went the speed that I could go I just couldn't handle the power and that's gonna be a lot of people that have faster bikes on the track so let's look at the difference. I did seven laps instead of eight. My fastest lap was 37, which was slower than my spec car by a whole second. And my average lap time was 43 seconds instead of 38 seconds. Huge difference. Despite having a faster vehicle, I went slower on the track. It all depends on the driver or the rider and how well you can manage your vehicle. Thanks for watching.